All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We have our first fig of the year. Can you guys find it? Can you spot it out? Good luck. <laughs> this is a giant jungle at this point. It's July. In fact, uh, this actually wasn't our first main crop fig of the year because I had filmed this exact video, I don't know, about a week ago, and the audio didn't work. So, what we actually have instead is the second and third figs of the year. But regardless, principles are the same. We have a Campanieri fig over here. They look real good. I went away to Nashville for the weekend. Bachelor party. Um, you know, I recommend it. The food's nice. You like the party, it's definitely a place to go. Um, but when I was there, actually, I want to mention why I'm bringing this up is that I went to a restaurant there called Husk. It's probably one of the better, fancier restaurants in, in Nashville. Um, although the food there, I would argue, is actually quite good. There are some places there that really know what they're doing, um, especially with barbecue. And you know, up here, we don't really get really great barbecue. In fact, it's true what they say. The South really does have the best barbecue, right? Uh, so anyway, um, I was at Husk and they have a Celeste actually right outside their, uh, their restaurant in this garden area. They have some espied pears. Um, they got really beautiful plants, trees out there. They even have a little garden. And it was also on, I think it's uh, South tw 12 South Street or something, South 12. Um, where it's a nice little strip uh, of like more of a suburban feel. And there's a restaurant there, I can't remember the name of it, uh, little shack type looking thing. But on the wall of the building is a giant hardy Chicago tree. Both of the trees, by the way, are producing figs. So as of the 24th of July in Nashville, you get right main crop off of very early in-ground fig tree varieties. So that's something important, that's special. That's you know, important to know because here, although I would argue it is definitely warmer there, we are close to the water, so that definitely helps our microclimate. But they're so far inland that it's just much more humid and it's uh, a lot hotter on average in the spring. Um, and that heat compounds, those metabolism heat units compounds and they're able to ripen their figs. I mean, I believe they were the first figs off the trees, but I could be wrong. It could be even earlier. Um, but that's quite impressive, you know, uh, to get figs that early. And for me, I, the only way I'm able to do it here to get main crop is to, you know, grow them in a container, put them in a greenhouse, or grow them in the ground, and again, put a greenhouse over top of it. Again, it's all that heat units that really builds up. It adds up over time and uh, really makes these figs produce at an earlier date. Because if you just don't have the heat units, you don't have the metabolism, you don't have the metabolism, the tree is just not gonna grow. You need the tree to grow to, to set the fruits. That's what the main crop is. It forms on that new growth. So basically, we have ourselves some figs. And we talked about this in the greenhouse, a video that we did, you know, relatively 70, 80 days ago, we talked about actually in that video that we said 75-ish days later, I will have right main crop. And it came true. It was about, it was like a five day off, five day difference from what I had estimated, just based on what we know, right? The figs form on the trees on their own. They form about 70 to 90 to 120 days later. So we know based on the timing of when they formed, when they're gonna ripen. Um, and it depends on where you guys live. I want to mention that little thing. So that's why people in the Pacific Northwest, you guys don't have the heat units. That 70 or 90 day average that it takes here to get a ripe fig is more like 120, maybe even 150 for you guys. You need to increase those heat units more than anybody else in the, probably the country. Uh, also people in the UK, very, very similar. You need to somehow get the sun shining on these black pots or the sun shining through some plastic 
somehow increase the heat and you will get ripe figs earlier. Now, it's really critical to get figs earlier for a lot of us. And I've talked a lot about this as well because the figs are just so much better. There's a lot of heat right now and because there's so much heat, a fig like this actually was swelling before I left on a Friday. Um, so during the day, this had just become a little bit larger. It started to turn yellow. And now it is Monday. So basically Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's only four days. This fig, Campaneri, which I don't know if I've, just, I've really talked about this in the past um, or at least written about it. The video that we did on this fig, uh, we talked about Ron de Bordeaux, we talked about Pastelier, we talked about Campaneri, and we, we looked at the trees on the, the west side of the house and we said that out of all the early varieties, this one's the best. The very, very early varieties, by the way. And I don't consider Hardy Chicago a very, very early variety. So, you know, I do actually, I don't remember if I've ranked Campaneri ahead of Hardy Chicago, but they're very, very similar. I think, actually, yeah, I think Campaneri is one step below Hardy Chicago. But having said that, this fig has an extremely low hang time. Again, four days. So when it starts to swell, four days later, I have what appears to be almost a fig that's starting to shrivel in this one here. If I left it on the tree, believe it or not, guys, it's been so dry here and the forecast will continue to be dry. These would turn into dry figs, like totally dried figs because that's what Campanarian can do. It just has such a high enough bricks. It doesn't split. Well, it can split. The cracking isn't so extreme that it's just a fig that honestly, um, probably should let one of these go, but I don't know. It's fig season and I don't really want to wait. Uh, they're extremely beautiful, by the way, and that's another point I really like to make about this time of the year. They have a, a yellowish green undertone, and then as they ripen, they get this gray, almost purple blush, kind of like a smith. And it's so, it's just so, so beautiful. Um, yeah. Anyway, so... That's my, my last little point there about, you know, getting these things earlier, but we've been talking a lot about the Bravas, the Brava crop. We did videos tasting them, we cooked them, we, we uh, basically talked about how we're rethinking them. We're thinking about growing a Desert King in the ground and wrapping it, which would really be the only scenario, I think, to even consider growing Bravas here. People, uh, I think, you know, we're, I'm open to it, right? I'm never closed-minded about one in particular thing, right? always going to be slightly open-minded to other possibilities. And of course, in this situation, Brabus. So if I think that there is some advantage of growing a tree like that here, then I will. And I'll tell you, Desert King seems like a good idea, uh, you know, in practice or in theory, but I haven't seen it in practice. So we need to really test it. We need to have a tree like that for a long time. The problem is though, is that I could very easily have the same exact thing in the ground, wrap it, or have a greenhouse plastic over a tree and get main crop really not that far behind the Brabus. You know, for a lot of you guys, the Brabus will buy you a month, maybe two months, depending on where you live, of production. Where here, because we get a lot of heat in the summer and it really warms up quick, these figs ripen quickly. So the Brava really only buys you about two weeks, especially if you can get yourself a greenhouse, it's even, you know, sort of less. So we've been picking all these Bravas and then two weeks later I get my first main crop. And the main crop's better, always. Um, the main crop is a higher quality and it's in higher quantity. So to me, it doesn't make sense. Here in this location, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And people are thinking, oh, Ross, where do you stand on this thing? Well, it still doesn't make sense. But if you can get a Desert King tree in the ground for two weeks or have two weeks of production off of that, it's a good fit tasting fig, good Brabus, and you wrap that every year and it's reliable every year, you can get it through the winter every year, then it's worth it. Let's cut this open. I'm always gonna, always going to prefer the main crop. Now, the first one I picked off of this tree was 
quite uh, waterlogged. You can tell with Campanieri is a bit waterlogged and a lot of figs are waterlogged because the pulp become a bit translucent. And there's a little bit of that translucent color on the edges of the pulp. So that means to me, this fig is kind of just still getting its act together, believe it or not. Got one more here I'm gonna cut. So even though these first couple figs off of the tree are early in July, and that's awesome, they're still not the best they can be in terms of what they should be doing. So it did rain on the first one that we picked. It hasn't rained really much at all for these, so the pulp color is a little better, but because this tree is probably not as mature as I'd like it to be, or the fact that these are some of the first, very first few figs off of the tree, they're just, they're lacking a little bit. But I bet you any amount of money they taste good. Oh yeah. Real good. So, this is, believe it or not, there was a Brave I had, Little Ruby, that I would consider a, I think I gave it a four out of five. That's exactly what this is. These are four out of fives. Very good figs. Anyone eating this is gonna be like, wow, I need to grow figs. The figs I had in Nashville, one Celeste, one Hardy Chicago, Pretty good, but not good as this. Not as good as this. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's just really the beauty of it, guys, is that if you want to have better tasting figs, you got to grow the right varieties. It's, all, it's just all it is. Um, Little Ruby, of course, impressed me because that one was just so well, perfectly, perfectly ripened that you could get it. And of course, it just really came through and impressed me. Um, I think if this fig, as it normally does uh, later, a bit, little bit later in the season, and I can get it more ripe, if I could start getting it a little bit drier on the tree, it'll start to definitely shrivel more and that flavor will concentrate more berry flavor. I'm going to get something that is at least a 4.5 out of 5, which is really quite special. So that's it, guys. That's my thoughts. We haven't really changed too many thoughts. I know people will think I'm flip-flopping, but we're just really be open. We're being open to Brabus. Excuse me. Because we we had such a great season here. It's just not normal. That's not a normal thing. So if I can make that normal, then yeah, I could see a good realistic situation where a Desert King tree in the ground would be feasible. But so far it's just not. I do also want to show you guys really quickly, I have some peaches. And for anyone out there that likes peaches, I love peaches. And I, I, by the way, I picked like another hundred of them before I left for my trip. But this one here is quite good. It's a Red Haven. What I want to do is eat this right now. It smells so fragrant, guys. My trees, if you walk by any of them, they smell like peaches uh, for, you know, even before they were even ripe, but this is really good. It's actually, I think, what I wanted to share with you guys is show you how this kind of compares to a fig. This for me is just under a fig. This is like perfectly ripe. The fig wasn't perfectly ripe, but this is so close. Different experience. One is jam. One is the most juicy, amazing thing. Super awesome peach flavor. The color is perfect. You can tell a peach is ripe by the top. It's got good coloring there. It's yellow. And then the inside is like a dark, it's a darker yellow, almost orange, and that's really quite critical. So Red Haven's a great variety, but Indian Free is even better. And I would say Indian Free, as good as that is, will compete with some of the best figs that I grow. So interesting. Um, but I still prefer the fig, a slight, slight margin. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. 
We'll see you for the next one. Take care.